and we're going to talk about planets, but before we do that, I just wanted to say two things about stars. Have you ever heard of a shooting star? If you have really dark skies and you happen to be looking in the right place at the right time, you might see one or two shooting stars every hour. If you'll watch carefully in this short video, you can see three of them. This was taken using a night vision camera if you're wondering why everything looks green. That's the horizon on the bottom. Those are trees and all those white dots are stars. All right, ready? See if you can find the shooting stars. Okay, if you didn't see that, I'll play it again. Keep your eye directed to where the arrow is pointing. You'll see a bright one there at first. Then there's a dim one off to the right. And then finally, another bright one if you keep your eye directed over here towards the end. Okay, ready? Shooting star isn't really a good name for these because they aren't stars at all. What they are, are actually tiny bits of rock falling from space. We call them meteors. They fall to Earth and burn up in our atmosphere along the way. Occasionally, one of them is large enough that it doesn't burn up all the way. And so if that happens, it lands on the ground like this one did here. This rock came from outer space. So that's one kind of star I wanted to talk about. Now, there's another kind of star I want to talk about, and that's wandering stars. They're very slow, so they're nothing like shooting stars. They're called wandering stars because they're stars that aren't part of any constellation. They move around. They're never in the same place from night to night. Like here, say you go outside one summer night, but here next to the constellation Scorpius is a star that wasn't there before. And then you come out the next night and watch what happens. It moves a little bit. And then the next night, it's moved more. And the next night, Within a few weeks, you come outside and you see that it's not in Scorpius at all anymore. But watch, now it's closer to the constellation Sagittarius, the teapot. And the other thing is there are different wandering stars. Some are slower than others, like this one here is different. This one barely moves each night. Watch it here. The next night and the next night. It's moving, but very slowly. It took a month just to go from here to here. So instead of getting from Scorpius to Sagittarius in a few weeks, like that other wandering star, it would take a whole year to do that. The ancient Greeks 2,000 years ago were the first civilization to try to think scientifically about things. They were the first people to try to figure out why things are the way they are. And the wandering stars really baffled them. They wondered, why do the wandering stars wander? Why don't they act like normal stars? They look like normal stars except for the fact that they don't stay put in one constellation. And why do some of them move more quickly than others? Well, it turns out to figure out the answer, you need a telescope. A telescope will lead you to their secret. The Greeks didn't have that. The telescope was invented in more modern times, over a thousand years after the ancient Greeks. Here's one wandering star as it appears through a telescope. And here's another. And here's one of the other wandering stars through a telescope. Look familiar? Now, you'd probably heard of a shooting star before, but if I had to guess, I would say you've never heard of the term wandering star before. But that's because I've been kind of sneaky. We don't call them by that name anymore. We use the name given to them by the ancient Greeks, who were kind of obsessed with trying to figure them out. And this was the name that they used. This word was their word meaning wanderer. Those are Greek letters, so let me show you what this word looks like using our alphabet. Planetes. Now do you know what I've been describing all this time? They're the planets. The planets are the wandering stars. See, you probably thought I was giving you this little intro about stars, and nope, we're actually already talking about the planets. If you're surprised, good, because I want you to be surprised. Of course, planets are not stars at all. They're more like worlds. That's how you think of them. You hear planet, and you think of these giant, colorful spheres. Or maybe it reminds you of a project where you made something like this. The reason I wanted to surprise you is to get your attention. To make you see that planets aren't just things in pretty pictures or styrofoam you paint for a school project. Planets are worlds that you can see for yourself. They're actually visible to you, in your sky, above your house, on any clear night. 
I want to change forever how you think about planets. So let's get started.